Hey guys, this is Jeff. Thanks again for joining me on this journey uh, to LS Swap my 1972 C10. Uh, today's video is part four. We're going to cover a lot of things. We're going to do some really cool stuff. We're painting the valve covers Chevy orange red. Uh, they look beautiful in that color. Uh, we clean up some of the heads that do a little bit of head work. We change the valve springs out, um, uh, put the head studs in, mount the heads. Uh, I think we get the exhaust manifolds on today uh, and made the transmission to the engine after we put the flex plate on and all that good stuff as well. Um, so stick around. I uh, hope you appreciate this video and enjoy it and hopefully it gives you some tips on what you guys can do with your own stuff. And then stay tuned for part five. Part five we're going to be pulling the engine and transmission, the old 350 and, and uh, automatic transmission that was in the old truck. We're going to be pulling that out and you get to see my, my two older sons give me a hand with that one. Thanks again for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Well we're waiting on head studs to get in and I finally picked up my heads from the guy that was helping me out. Um, we're going to go ahead and clean these up a little bit. Actually I already cleaned them up, masked them off, going to put a coat of primer on them. Got some engine enamel primer in gray um, to help the paint stick. And then I'm going to paint the valve covers in the Chevy orange red. Let me show you my setup here. Um, I'm using the comp cams tool. I used this on my LS3 when I did that. Uh, it worked really well. I have another tool that fits specifically for uh, the 5.3 heads and the 4.8 heads, but when I had the 6.3, they had that offset rocker, so I had to buy this other tool. Since I like the way it worked a little bit better, it was a little smoother and cleaner, I'm going to go ahead and use it on this one too. Um, I do recommend that every time you tighten this main bolt that goes through to push the plate down that compresses your springs, that you use some sort of assembly lube or oil or something like that because these threads do get gummed up, and if they get gummed up, it makes the tool ineffective. All right, I went around each valve spring, put a socket over here that fits right on top of the seat, and I'll just hit it a couple times, kind of like that. I did that with all of them already, so hopefully that loosened them up enough to break these keepers loose. Head studs are in, got the Speedmaster, kind of ARP knockoff Chinese studs. Uh, got them kind of laid out here, and there's no torque sequence or specs or anything like that to follow. So I'm going to follow kind of a similar process to how you do the ARP studs, uh, both torquing them down in a certain uh, torque spec. Um, you st always start with the middle one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on look it up if you don't know it and then do it in, in different passes so the first pass for the long bolts are going to be 25 then 50 and then ARP says 75 for the third pass I'm going to stop at 70 for these just so I don't overdo it and then after these are torqued with the head on obviously you don't torque them when you put them in uh, then you torque uh, the smaller bolts here to a, a lighter torque setting which I think is either 22 or 25 and I'll look that up uh, I think ARP says 25 but I'm first going to apply some of this wonderful fastener assembly lube and I'll fast forward through most of this. Alright, studs are in, so now it's time to throw the heads on.
is. The shiny new red valve covers. All right, time to torque the flex plate on. There's three passes. We'll do the first pass at 15 foot pounds, and 37, and then 74. Ladies and gentlemen, I join these two together in holy matrimony. All right, time to attach the flex plate to the converter. I first wire brushed the converter bolts. And I'm going to get a little red Loctite, and then each of these get torqued down to 45 foot pounds. Uh, as you can see here, I've already put the water pump on. I didn't show you guys that. I forgot to start filming. I put the vent tubes on and the block offs for the back with new O-rings. Um, the thing I'm trying to plan for right now is what to do with the steam line. Um, I've heard a lot of people go and they tap it right into the top of the water pump which seems to work good. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go that route. I think I'm gonna go the simple non-drilling, non-tapping holes route. Put a loop down here on the actual water pump and then put an MPT, or not an MPT, a, a quarter inch fitting that goes into that loop. Um, like that and just have the steam port into there. Uh, seems to be the simplest plug and play option I can come up with, but um, it might look messy. If it looks messy when I'm all done and it's in the truck and it looks bad, I'm going to go back, pull the water pump off, and go ahead and bite the bullet and just tap into it there. I don't have the older style pump that has the flat piece on the back that you can tap into the back piece, so I would tap directly into the top of the the, the re return hose piece.